When you click on the subscribe button below this video, you'll see a little bell. Click on the bell and you'll get future notifications. So um, let me start with the general idea of the calendar. And then I will, at the end, I'll make sure everybody has access to it. What I'm showing you right now is my actual calendar. Like this is how I live <laughs> by this calendar. I'm very time blocked. When I first came into EXP, I had been a realtor for only about eight months and that was in 2017. And I had sold like a total of seven houses my whole life. Um, I had come from car sales right before that. And in car sales, you know, it was basically like you show up to work and then you just, you hit the phones until somebody shows up on the, uh, the sales room floor or you walk around the lot until somebody shows up in the lot and you sell them a car. <laughs> so, and then when nobody's around, then you do whatever kind of marketing you want to do, mailers, whatever. And there was no structure. When I was a, a reporter, a newspaper reporter, um, you know, we had a structure and then I had a deadline. Sylvia, here's these six stories you have to write in the next two days. So I just plowed through and did it till I met my deadline. When I was a teacher, I was time blocked and then I knew what time I was teaching and I had to know what I was going to teach. And I had to know what I knew what I was going to do the following week. But the rest of my life <laughs> beyond what I was doing at school was not time blocked. I did sell Mary Kay as well for two years full time and eight years total. And the weekly plan sheet was something you were always asked to do by your Mary Kay sales director. And it was still like I did it like, OK, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do skincare classes here. I'm going to do, you know, calls to set appointments for skincare classes here. I'm going to. You know, so I'm going to do networking for my business here. I'm going to do admin for my business here. And, and I did try it, but it just, it just, I couldn't ever make it work. So time blocking was uh, still a mystery to me for some reason. And it wasn't until I came into EXP and I, there was a time blocking class, you know, because I was like, maybe I'm going to figure this out now. There's going to be some secret magic to time blocking that I'm going to learn. You know, I didn't. It was just basically put it on a calendar what you're doing and make sure every day, two hours a day, you're doing prospecting calls. That was <laughs> what I learned. Okay, we all know this. Okay. Over time, I tried a variety of things. I tried the paper calendar, like, you know, a, a planner, a weekly, you know, planner. And, and then I would also have my Google and I'd have both. But now I have so, so busy and in multiple businesses. Like the best thing to do for me is just put it all in a digital calendar. So I use Google calendar and now I don't write anything down except for I have a notebook that I always have with me. But as far as my daily schedule, I live and die by my calendar. Now, my calendar is a crazy person calendar. You don't have to have a crazy person calendar, but let's say you're using Google or Outlook. And if you're an EXP, I feel like you should definitely be use, be all Google-based because everything that's shared is all Google-based. It just will make your life so much easier. But whatever you want to do, fine. Anyway, so have a Google Calendar. And this is where I have everything. So I'm going to just show you all my calendars so that you can see how this works. Um, this, what I'm showing you right now, this is just purely my my count, my work calendar and everything personal I have on here too, whether it's personal or work, it's all on here. So when I'm traveling, you know, um, when I'm coaching, when I'm calling agents for recruiting, um, and you know, I, I run a team. So my team power huddle, my other team coaching calls for my team. And then weekends, if I'm going to actually show houses and work with clients, it's going to be the weekends or evenings. That's because I'm so busy now during the, I do do prospecting of my own clients, um, you know, at least two days a week, but it's not, an, it's, that's all I can do based on all everything I'm doing. But if you're doing real estate full-time and you don't have other side gigs or full-time jobs or other jobs getting in the way, um, you, you really, and, and, and even if you do, whether, whatever your situation is, is what I'm going to say, you need to have you be very time blocked and then abide by that schedule. Decide what you're going to do and then do it. I heard an example once that really helped me with really everything I do in life and everything I decide I'm going to do. If you schedule, a, if you buy a plane ticket to go somewhere, 
and you schedule like, okay, I got to be at the airport this time. And I know when I get to the airport, I'm going to go through check in. I'm going to check in my bag. I'm going to go through security. I'm going to, you know, get through security. And then I'm going to go find my gate. And then if I have time, maybe I'll grab a snack or maybe I need to work on my computer a little bit. And then I'll board the plane. You know, you know, that's what you're going to do. And you don't just decide not to do it. Right. You, you actually go do that <laughs> because it's important. You have to get to your destination. So if you've created a time block for yourself to get to a destination, then you got to go do that thing. You can't just not, not do it. Otherwise, you're not going to get to your destination, right? So what I'm going to help you do is figure out what do you need to do to get to your destination? What is your destination? Do you know what that is? And what do you need to do to get there? Anyway, this is my work calendar. I also have an appointment calendar. Um, if I click on this, anybody who's scheduled a Calendly with me, which I keep very limited, like actually anybody who's on my team really can only schedule time black with me now, but it'll show up here if I have an appointment. If anybody on Facebook schedules an appointment, because I have on my Facebook business page that option, it will show up here. Um, I have my, my team, this is my team calendar. It's in green. So this is everything I'm doing for my team. And you'll notice everything for my team, I've also copied over to my purse, my, my work calendar. So, um, you know, prospecting power hours on the team calendar, but it's also on my own calendar. Um, this KB Core Mastery, where I teach my team, KB Core, it's on my work calendar, but it's also on the team calendar. My Michigan State Broker Meeting is on my, my own calendar, but it's also on the team calendar. Because the team calendar I can share with other people. So I have it duplicated. I also have the Sylvia system. So everything I'm doing in the Sylvia system when I'm coaching, when I'm training is here. I also have my team think future calendar. This is my rev share calendar. And then finally, this is my KB core calendar. I just clicked and it's the one in green. Okay. So that's what my calendars actually look like. So when I'm when I am want to look at everything, these are the calendars I'm looking at. So I know what I'm not missing. But what else is on here? Well, if I scroll down, I have this other calendars option. <laughs> All right. And what are these? Are, these are calendars I've subscribed to that I've added. So for example, if I want to see the EXP education calendar, I can click here and there it all is. So if it's too messy and I just want to look at just the education calendar, I can unclick all this. And I know everything in EXP world that's going to be taught and I can look at it, you know, um, by like the schedule. If I can look at it easier that way so I can see what's happening. And so, so this, you can go up here and look at day, week, month, year, and then schedule, which another word for it would be agenda. So you can see what's happening. So let's say on Monday, I, I'm like, okay, I want to go to one of these classes. Okay, here's one database management fundamentals. I want to go to that. Then I can just click on this, click on options, and then I can copy it to my own calendar. And what's, um, what's, nice about this is in EXP um, for the training calendar, everything's in Pacific time, but I'm in Eastern time, but my calendar is in Eastern time. So if I copy this to my work calendar, it will show up. It's showing in Pacific time, 11 to noon, right? But if I save it to my work calendar and go back to the week, and I did that for the 16th and get rid of this. So on the 16th, so here it is. It's saved now to my own calendar. And now notice it moved. It moves time zones to two o'clock, which is my time zone. So now I'm like, okay, good. I just saved that to my own calendar and I'm going to follow. I'm going to go to that class. And I've got all the information I need to go to that class. And now I've, I put it on my calendar. So that's an example. What other, what other example do I have for you? I have a couple of VAs um, that work for me and I want to know what they're doing. So this is my operations director, Laura. She shared her calendar with me. She shared it that I have access to view it. So I can see everything that she's going to be doing. She's all time blocked. I know when she's going. She also has my stuff on there too. Like she knows my flights and everything. And so I can, I know what she's doing and when. So I know that she has a plan and she's working. And then she's reporting back to me what she's doing. Um, then another 
um, VA, this VAs in the Philippines, she schedules out exactly what she's going to be doing and when, what she's going to be working on. And I can see what she's going to work on and when. So these are the people, the calendars that are shared with me or, and, or that I created. So that's just a short calendar training. There's so much more to talk about than this, but once you, you have to just play with it. Basically, you have to play with the calendars in order to start seeing how they work. Before I get into the KB Core strategy calendar, I want to talk briefly about my KB Core only calendar. And, uh, and then we'll get into the strategy calendar. So you probably didn't know this was going to be a time block calendar training today, but it is. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to go back to all my calendars here, make sure they're all on. All right. So these are all my calendars that I know I need to make sure that I don't miss anything for myself. And what I want to show you is this one, this green one. I'm going to click on settings and sharing. And I call it Sylvia Dana KB Core. And um, it's in my same organization. So when it says organization, that means I, I have what's called a Google workspace. It used to be called G Suite. And so it's I've branded that account with my domain, sylviadana.com. So I've created several users. Um, you know, my, my admins, people that work for me have a sylviadana.com email address. And um, so I created another email address um, that's only for my KB Core account. It's only KB Core. And I wanna show you what that looks like. And what I did is I, it's, avail it's available to me that I can see it. I've also shared it with another version of myself <laughs> to be able to see this calendar. All right, let me talk about this for a minute. So I'm gonna go into my own KB Core account. When I go to the activity dashboard, I can see like all the general activity that's happening. And you'll see here, you can see emails. Now, you might be someone who has not synced your email to your email to your KB Core account. And there's a variety of reasons you might not have done that or you did it and you didn't like it. <laughs> and one reason is when I first synced KB Core to an email account for the first time, I synced it to my re regular business email. And my regular e business email is a hot mess, let's just say. I mean, I have all kinds of stuff in here. Okay, so you know, you know, people who have viewed uh, listings from the MLS, uh, event right. Um, when I have the tech support question, um, people asking for access to stuff, EXP tech support tickets, um, stuff from my team, um, bomb bomb messages being opened, uh, appointments being set, you know, junk also junk, not just junk, but just, just, you know, stuff from Grant Cardone, not junk, but just like sales pitches and things that I want. But, you know, when I purchase something, you know, yeah, you, you, you purchased it. Good job. You know, um, you know, all this stuff. And I don't want to sync these contacts and these emails into my KB Core because that's a hot mess. The only thing I want in KB Core is I want to interact only with the leads, my leads that I've captured and are emailing to me or my sphere database I've added into KB Core and then they're responding to emails that I'm sending from KB Core. That's all I want to see in here. I don't want to see any mess. So what I did is I created a whole separate Google account, Gmail account. Um, that's only for KB Core only. Okay. And it keeps it nice and clean. Why would you want to at sync sync? Well, number one, you want to be able to click on you want to see your, all your newest emails that come in. And they'll also within about two hours, they'll also show up on the activity board. They'll, but they'll be in here and then um, they'll be in here right away. And then they'll show up here within a couple hours. And, and, or sooner. It just depends on how quick KB Core is feeling that day. So, but what's nice about the sync is then I can click here and read the full email. It's going to take me to my email. And I, I could also click on respond and I can respond to that email directly from inside KB Core. If you don't have a sync, you can't direct, directly respond to KB Core. And if you don't have a sync, what happens? These emails go into your messy business email where things could fall through the cracks, you know, so I'm going to miss somebody replying to me because I have all this other garbage in here, you know, so that's why I created a whole separate email account. 
So um, I can, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that account. So I have a multiple email accounts, by the way, because of what I do and everything. But like, if you just have just a business email and then this KB Core only email, it might help clean up your life. So this is my KB Core only email. And what's nice is everything in here is only action and interaction with KB Core leads or contacts that are there in KB Core, whether they're my sphere or past clients or new leads responding to me. So John C. Weber, um, you know, this came out, what did this come from? Does anybody know? It says, I'm glad you were able to spend a bit of time on my site again. It looks like you're doing a few home searches. I'll, I'll research your area, set up some property alerts to keep on top of the market. Anything specific you're looking for, question mark. So who knows where this came from? Where did this email come from? Does anybody know? Behavior alerts, yes. And, and, and he replied. He said, no, thanks. Just always looking, but I know I'll never, I'll never buy. Okay, cool. Fine. He, he might someday, someday buy, but maybe he never will, but he might know somebody who will someday. I'm not going to delete him. Um, I'll just still be doing my job. In fact, Katie Core will do my job for me. Look how it did my job for me. Wasn't that great? <laughs> I didn't have to follow, he, KB Core followed up with him and he responded. So anyway, what's beautiful about this is I can only see whatever's happening. So Dennis, he, he might be interested in selling his home soon. I made him a video message. And so I'm gonna say, great, Dennis. Um, would you like to schedule a quick call to discuss? I'm gonna, this is my Calendly link. Um, all right, so. Here's the link. All right, and then I'm just working while I'm getting things done with you guys. <laughs> I'm just doing what I need to do. <laughs> so now I responded to him. So anyway, so everything's nice and clean in here. I can see when I, I got a new lead or when a behavior alert went out. I can also, I can also, and I've started doing this. I just haven't finished. Can, you can organize those leads. Like, so here's all my new lead emails in here. Here's all my replies in here. So if anybody's replied to me, anybody who's unsubscribed. So I kind of, I filtered them so I can see things better. I'm still working on building this. But anyway, that's super nice. That's super nice. Everything's clean and tidy and for me. And the way that you do that is in, you click the little email on top here, go to Google settings. And then I only connected the email and the calendar because we're getting to the calendar here. And I've synced it with my KB Core only account. This is my KB Core only email. This is not an email I share with anybody. It's not on my business cards. It's title companies don't have it. The only people that have this is people that have replied to me or received an email from me from my KB Core account. That's it. Okay. Um, and so let's look at the calendar. So I did sync the calendar and the calendar is probably not going to have tons of stuff on here, but right now, but here, anytime a task, anytime a task um, happens from a campaign, uh, an automatic task that's created, it will show up on your calendar. And so I had, you know, during this time, um, I'm noticing there's a lot of my old sphere that I added a bajillion years ago that now can't, there are sphere campaigns that were three years long are now ending. And so, but anyway, you can see what's, what's going on here. It's pretty nice. So because if you ever create your, a task for yourself, it will show up. So let's, let's look at one as an example. I'm going to find that guy, Dennis Bowman. The one that said he might be interested in selling his home. So I'm going to make myself a task. And I'm going to go here to more actions, add a task, and call about selling. So Dennis, Dennis replied he might be interested, interested in selling soon. I sent him an email to schedule a call, but I need to either door knock or get his number. Currently don't have a number. 
So what do I have to do here? Maybe I'll go to Red X or Home Snap and see if there are numbers in there and call them, go door knock them, go hang something at the door, do something with this person <laughs> because I don't have a phone number right now. Okay, so I'm gonna add a task. Oops, I'm gonna change, say I'm gonna change this for tomorrow just, just to show you. Say okay, and I'm gonna do this at like um, two o'clock, 2.30 p.m., let's say, okay. So I'm adding the task. And now that task is gonna show up in two places. It's good, well, three places. It's gonna show up on his um, timeline, okay? And there's my next task, it's up there. So I just put it up there. So it's gonna show up on his timeline. And then where else is it gonna show? It's gonna show on the calendar here. And there it is. But, but it's going to show up on my real calendar that I use every day. So here's my real calendar. <laughs> That's my calendar, you guys. And there, look at, look at in green. My Sylvia Dana KV Core calendar is showing up in green for me. That's how I labeled it. And it sh shows me what I have to do. So tomorrow at 2.30, it says, Dennis Bowman, Bowman, call about selling. And it says, lead Dennis Bowman. There's no phone number. So it's not in there. His email's in there. And then I have notes, Dennis replied, he might be interested in selling. I sent him an email. I need it to either door knock or get his number, currently no phone number. So then I can click on the details and it's gonna take me back to the lead. So anyway, I can create these tasks and they'll show up my calendar and it's nice, okay? The other thing you wanna know if you do do this, if you create a separate email for this, the last thing I want you to know, you're gonna to go to um, profile in your profile and you are going to ensure that in your profile, you have A, made sure the from email that you're using is the same email as the email you're using to do that sync. So that's my info at sylvedana.com. That's my Katie Core only email. So you don't have to have a branded domain like I do. It could, let's say, let's say Gino has Gino sells houses at gmail.com and that's his business email but now he wants to create a separate uh, gmail account just for kv courts could be gino kv core at gmail.com and that could be you know his his um kv core only email so anyway what you want to do is double check the from name i'm sorry the from email make sure it's the same email that you want um your emails to come from when you're sending out from KB Core, and also make sure you have your from name in there. And then you can use the from email from for your notifications. So those are just a couple little tips. What happens if you want to switch from current email in KB Core to a KB Core only email? Nothing happens. You're just going to do it. Just do exactly what I did. Nothing. Now what's going to happen is those emails are going to start going to your KB Core only email and start coming from your KB Core only email. Um, can you show how to switch the emails or mine are going to my business email? I'd like to have a separate one for only KB Core. So Emily, you'll have to create a whole separate account and then sync it. And then the way, again, you do that is you go here to the little envelope and you go down to Google settings. And then my, I already have an account synced. If you don't have one, it'll say sync an account. You'll choose your new KB Core only email or whatever email address you're going to use. It's your choice. And then sync it. And I would recommend you don't do the contacts First, you don't do this, <laughs> okay? Leave that alone, it's gonna cause problems. Just do email and calendar. I don't use my EXP email for this. Yeah, you don't wanna, Jamie, you don't wanna use your EXP email address for your um, reply email or sending from email. You be, The reason you don't want to is because um, that is an alias. Your EXP email address is an alias. It's not a real email address. It doesn't have its own true inbox. It's just forwarding your email to your business account. So you would not want to use your EXP email address for that email because it could cause spam. It could cause your stuff to go to spam. So for me, again, in my profile, your from email is should be a true email and one with a true inbox. Yeah, so jamie, jamie.kbcore at gmail.com is fine. All right. Um, or however, you know, just remember that whatever email comes through, 
um, to them, like your client, your prospects, they're going to see that email address. So decide what it should be. You know, maybe it could be something else than saying KD Core, but I, you know, it's just an example. You could, you could say it, nobody cares, but that's fine. You one you created with a pass through EXP mail. So, Jamie, yeah. So, what you're saying is you created a business account um, that you're that you're forwarding your EXP email to. Yes, you can use that, but if you use that email for your for the rest of your business, it's going to get really messy, like mine is. And so, you can see I've got all kinds of crap in here. There's nothing to do with KB Core leads. I would. I would do a Katie core only emails. What I'm suggesting, you don't have to. Why did you name your from email info? I don't know. Because I already had Sylvia at sylviadana.com. I had hello at sylviadana.com already taken for other stuff. So I just made one that said info. Okay, no big, I mean, there was no mastermind strategy to that. <laughs> now that you have some calendar training, now we're going to dig, take a deep dive on the strategy calendar for KB Core that I've created for you. So let's look at it. I'm going to uncheck all these boxes so we don't have to look at things. I'm going to show you the strategy calendar. And then we're going to go through how you would use this. I've taught this several times. I always teach the five plus five plus five. And the five plus five plus five is my own little thing I came up with because my very first managing broker told me, Sylvia, you're going to choose five sources of leads to choose from and you're going to focus on no more than five three to five so what am i talking about like door knocking can be a source your sphere can be a source working your social media can be a source um, networking in the community at community events could be a source um, you know purchasing leads can be a source so there's all these different ways you can lead generate as an agent uh, you know, farming an area, except doing open houses. So, so that's the first thing you, you want to do. But the second thing is um, five ways to follow up with your leads is the other five plus five plus five. So different ways to follow up video messages, text messages, door knocking, VIP events, um, emails, mailings, postcards, Facebook group, inviting people to Facebook groups, what, whatever it is, all these different ways you can engage and follow up with your people. Um, you know, voicemail drops, video emails and texts, what, newsletters, weekly newsletters. I mean, there's a variety of things. The third five by five by five is just logging in <laughs> to KV Core five days a week. Okay. All right. So let's look at what logging in looks like. So if I click on the KV Core daily review, Monday through Friday, let's say. Um, one thing you should note is this, my calendar is all in Eastern time. So if you're in Pacific or Central Mountain, um, when you when you add this to your calendar or you subscribe to it, you're going to want to you know choose what you're going to want to do and copy it to your own calendar to fix, not only fix the time zone issue, but then move it to the time you want. Because if I'm Eastern and I'm starting at 8 a.m. and you're Mountain time, you're not going to want to start this at uh, you know 5 a.m. <laughs> You know, so unless you do, maybe you do want to start at 5 a.m. I'm just, you figure that part out, okay? But here's the structure. When you open up these, it tells you to change the time, day of this time block, copy this event to your own calendar. Then you can modify the event to work for your own schedule. So remember, I taught you that at the beginning. Click on options, go to copy to your own calendar, save it, and then you can edit it from there as far as when and when, when you want to do it during the day, okay? But what are you going to do, actually? You're going to simply do this. Log in. For the first 15 minutes, you're going to review your dashboard activity. You're going to respond to questions, requests, emails, and texts. What does that look like? So I'm going to log in to my dashboard. I'm going to go here to all activity, and I'm going to start with questions. Are there any new questions that I have? that I haven't responded to. No, I don't have any new ones. So that's good. Sometimes you'll get a question, you'll miss it, and then you'll feel like a jerk. Um, the next thing is showing requests because people will do this. Um, people that you don't know, that you haven't worked with yet, they're treating it like Zillow. They're treating it like realtor.com and they're requesting a showing. You don't wanna miss those because they're people who are interested <laughs> that, that they might even have a pre-approval you know, or they need help getting one. They need to know the process. So 
Don't miss any of those. So questions, showing requests, any new text messages. So again, we're looking for all the things that people might have replied to or sent to us that we need to respond to. So we're trying to find anything that we need to respond to first. So new texts. So this is somebody in my sphere. She sent me this email. Uh, and so this is, must be her own, her new email. So I had updated, so I did, I updated her and I did respond. Anyway, so what new texts do I need to reply to? And then finally, new emails. Who sent me an email that I have missed that I have not responded to yet? Okay, so that's what you're gonna do first, that first 15 minutes. You're gonna re review the activity dashboard, respond to questions, requests, emails, and texts. Next, you're gonna look at your new leads and you're gonna check on search alerts, market reports, campaigns, and valuations. So what does that look like? I'm gonna go into my smart CRM and in my smart CRM, um, by default, it will show you the newest lead created at the top and then go down from there and go through and see what's going on here. Like, okay, so this is a new lead. Um, what is this? It's an address. We'll get to this one. It's an address only. I do not have a, a name or a phone number or an email. So what am I going to do with that? Um, so we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but then look at, okay, this one's Gertrude. So my VA went in here. You can see noted by Yen. She looked at looked the address up in um, RPR. She discovered the owner's name, the value, the sold date, owner occupied, and she put this little project note here that she's created a, a flyer, a property flyer for this person that we're going to be mailing out to Gertrude to say, hey, you requested your home valuation. Here's an update. Let me know if you want to talk. So that, so whatever you're going to do for those types of leads, um, you can look at that. But first, what we want to do is find the ones that have um, phone numbers and emails and see if we need to do anything for them. So for this one, this was a certain type of lead I get that I pay for through um, the KB Core Marketplace. It's called Facebook AI Retargeting. It's $250 a month. And what happens is it's a Facebook lead form the lead comes in and I have and this hashtags automatically assigned. KB Core sends in the hashtag that way. What you do with this program is you choose a zip code. And then what they're doing is promoting properties in that zip code on Facebook and people are clicking and registering through a Facebook lead form. And so when this happens, a property alert automatically gets added and they get um, either they get a custom campaign or they get my default buyer campaign, depending on the situation. You can see, you know, how was this um, lead acquired? <laughs> how did it come in? When did they first sign up? And I can see they're on a campaign. So good. Property alert set. Campaign set. If there's something I don't like about the property alert, I can edit it here. I can edit it and change the criteria instead of getting daily, maybe twice a week, whatever. You change the price range, whatever I want to change. But I don't know anything about Maria yet. So I'm going to wait till I hear back from her about her search criteria and she can, maybe I can edit it there, but that's one thing you might check on. The other thing you might do for a buyer is maybe add market report. So she's looking, if she's looking at 49505, then maybe I'll just create a market report for 49505. Or if you're in a really rural area, maybe instead of a zip code, you would do a city. Or if you're in a super rural area, you might do a whole county. But I'm in a pretty urban area and each zip code is pretty unique and, and full of people. So um, I'm gonna, when you see use geographical areas, don't ever choose that, say no, no to that. And say every 28 days, they're gonna get a market report as well, okay? I don't have the address, so there's no listing valuation, but I know, She's good. She's on a property alert. That's fine until I decide to edit it based on her response to me. She's on a campaign. I can see the future touch points that are going to go out. Um, she's on a market report now. So that's what I mean by going through these leads and making sure they're on the thing. This one was a lead that a seller lead that came in. So it's different than a buyer. And I did, I do the same things pretty much. I just, okay, they're on a listing valuation. Cool. All right. I add a market report. For again, for the city or the 
um, zip code depending. This is a more, Cedar Springs is a more rural area. So I just did a whole city instead of a zip code that she, I added that for her. I, she was automatically put on a campaign. And then what I do for sellers, I add a property alert that they're gonna get twice a month or once a month, depending on how frisky I'm feeling, um, of all the new listings in their area. Um, because if they ask for the home valuation, they might be interested in what new listings are going up and how much they're listing for um, as well. So that's another thing I do for sellers. So that's an example of what you're going to do when you do the second um, stint. So again, the first thing you were going to do is just review, to, respond to any questions that need to be responded to. And you are going to then review all your new leads and check on the search alerts, market reports, campaigns, and valuations. Next, you're going to call any new leads. So if you actually have a phone number, you're going to call them. You're going to leave a voicemail. You're going to send a follow-up text and you're going to send a video message. What do I mean? So let's, as an example, let's look at Dennis because he responded to me and he's on my mind right now. So um, I didn't have a phone number for him. So what was my option? My most immediate option was to send a video message. So that's what I did and it worked. <laughs> So um, where is that video message? So, um, so yeah, I sent him this video message because I didn't have a, a phone number. So what am I talking about? Well, here you can click on core video and you can open the recorder and you can make a video and then type a message to somebody to say, um, whatever you want to say to see if they'll, you can get them to respond to you. And you can do that. You can send 10 email video messages like that um, 10 times a month. Or if you upgrade to Core Video Premium, it's $30 a month. Um, if you don't want to use the free, if you don't want to be limited by the free version, you want to send more than 10. If you also want to send text messages with video in it, if you want to include um, video in campaigns, if you want that full bomb bomb integration, because you could with this core video, you can use the bomb bomb integration and put bomb bomb videos anywhere on web pages and any other kind of emails, um, on you know, share links and messages. I mean, there's so much you can do with that bomb bomb integration. So anyway. If you want to do that, you can do that. Otherwise, you can do it for free for 10 individual email messages a month. So what do you do? Well, I made this video message to Dennis from Sylvia EXP. He knows he opened it and he did respond. And so what does it say? Let's look. Hey Dennis, it's Sylvia Dana here with EXP Realty. And, um, you've been checking out properties on my website. I'm sending you property uh, listings every day. And I don't have your phone number, so I can't call you, but I wanna send you a video message to find out, is there something specific I can do for you in regards to real estate? Um, do you wanna have a quick call and you can talk me through what you're trying to accomplish? Or do you want me to edit um, the search alerts that you're getting? Is there something different about that criteria you'd like me to set? Do you want to get them every day or would you rather just get them like twice a week? Um, I'd love to know. And if you are thinking about buying or selling soon in the next little bit here, um, I'd love to be of assistance. So please let me know what you're thinking. And, and if you're just curious about the market, that's fine too. Either way, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks, Dennis. So that was what he replied to. Yeah, I'm thinking about selling soon. So, so anyway, what you're going to do is go through and figure out how can you convert these. If you have a phone number, you can call them. If you have a phone number, you can send a follow-up text. If you have an email only, you can send a video message. If you do also have a phone number, I would still send, if you don't get to reach them when you call them, I would still do a video message email and send that video message via text if you have the core premium upgrade. So, so that's what you're going to do. Now, if you do call, and you do something in here that you want to remember, what you're going to do is you're going to add a note. So I'm going to click here, add a note. Um, Dennis responded to my uh, video email about how I, I can help him. He replied that he is considering selling soon. I emailed back and asked him to schedule a call. 
I need to follow up with this to get his phone number and address. And then I, I can just like put the date. I, if that's my VA, for my VAs and lenders who are also in here, I always, you know, training everybody, put your, because a lot of people are in my account. So, so put your, um, your name and like the date so that we know who's what, and I can pin this to the top. Okay. So now I pin that to the top. It says my note has been added. I'm going to hit refresh. And now um, whether I spoke to him or I did a thing, I want to remember it. I added the note and I pinned it to the top, meaning as I'm scrolling down here, every new event that might happen, it's okay because I'll still see this note at the top. If I don't pin it at the top, it could get lost in the shuffle if more things happen. So I like to pin it at the top so I can always see it. And then from here, I can also edit that note. Okay. So that is that. Let's see here. So, and then finally, you know, conduct your process for your seller lead conversion. So if you do get just an address, you definitely want to go to RPR. Or if you're in Canada, you'll go to a Geo Warehouse or other, other system to get the homeowner's name, figure out what, how, what you're going to mail them um, and conduct that process. Um, or, and, and if, even if you do have a phone number and email, you still want to mail them something. So what is your process for your seller leads? that you need to do. So maybe you want to do that on a daily basis or a weekly basis, but do that. So that's what you're going to do every day. Okay. Now, um, the, ne the rest of it that I'm going to get through will be faster, but I just, I want to go through each one. Okay. Because I want to make sure you know what to do with this calendar. So the first thing I just want to remind you of is if you want to add, this is a calendar that you're going to be subscribing to. And you're going to, and it's going to show in your Google calendar like this, other calendars, just like, like the EXP calendar is. Okay. So, but what if you want to add one of these things to your calendar? I'm going to go here and I'm going to copy this to my calendar. Okay. So copy to your own work calendar or wherever you're going to save it, copy to the work calendar. And then here it says every weekday, Monday through Friday. Now, if I want to change something about that, I can. I'm like, well, I don't want to do that every day. I just want to do it once a week, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, you know, you can change it from here. You can also change the time. And so it's probably going to show for you Eastern time initially. Um, so instead of doing this right away, I would just go ahead and save it. And now it's going to be saved to your own calendar. And now from here, then this is when you can move it. Like, okay, I, I'm, I want to do this um, maybe custom. I'll go to custom. Like, I don't want to do it every day. I'm going to only do this Monday, Wednesday, and Friday only. And, and then done. Uh, and then I'm not going to do it at 8 a.m. Uh, 10 a.m. is better for me. Okay. And now save that. So now... I've this, and then I'm going to change this in all following events. And now I've just changed that to happen at 10 a.m. weekly, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And now it's on my own calendar the way that I want it. Okay. But the original calendar is still here if I want to see that, but I've added it to my own calendar. And now if I deleted looking at my strategy calendar, the event I just created is now there. So if you want to make adjustments, that's what you're going to do. All right, so let's go back to this calendar again and talk more about what's on here. Um, another thing that's going to happen every week, not every day, but every week is, and now you could do this every day, <laughs> it depends on how many leads you have, but an active lead follow-up session. So what you're going to do is for two hours, you're going to conduct a follow-up session to just review, call, and message all your active leads. Those leads that A, have replied to you, like Dennis did. Or B, they're just super hot leads. So here, anytime somebody replies to you, by default, the way the system's set up, unless you made a change, um, by default, somebody who replies to you is going to become an active lead. So I can, I can go here, search in the filters, and just find all my active leads, for example, and focus on them. Who are my people who are responding to me? Even if they said, no, thank you, they responded. So, so. Who, who, who do I need to work with here? What do I need to do about these people? So that's, you're going to comb through that and see who needs 
you know, do they need anything updated about their search alerts or listing valuations or market reports? Do they need anything updated about the campaign? Have you called them again? Um, you know, I was just talking to a lender yesterday who I'm going to be working with on my KB Core, and he said he used to work at, at a different, as a loan officer, a different place where they'd get leads and they'd call between eight and 10. And they, and anybody they didn't contact, they'd start again at 1230 and call again from 1230 to two to try to call them again. <laughs> and, you know, and then again, an evening time slot. So, so it's like, how, what are you going to do to try to get these people? Cause it does take between 10 and 20 touches in order to convert a stranger sometimes. So what are you going to do with these active leads? Are you just going to call them one time and then say they're not interested or are you going to work for it? What are you going to do? So, so the first thing you do is look for, you know, go through your active leads and see what you need to do for them to try to convert them. And then the other thing you can do is on this dashboard, you can look at hot leads, click on hot leads. These people might not have responded to you yet, but maybe you can work, do something, a video message, a phone call, a mailing, depending if you have their address, to try to convert them, to do more, work harder to try to convert them. So that's what you're going to do in a minimum two-hour time slot. And I notice I put this over the same time of Prospecting Power Hour. Prospecting Power is an event that you can't change the time and day of because this is, I actually do this, this is where I'm going to be. <laughs> I'm going to be here with you. If you don't register and join, um, what you can do is you can come on a Prospecting Power Hour with me uh, and a few of my, my other colleagues um, and we make calls together. And so at the beginning, we say, this is who we're going to call. Uh, these are our goals. Then we mute each other out of the Zoom for uh, an hour, but we can still see each other working and on the phone and stuff so that we don't feel alone. And then at the end of an hour, we report back how many calls we made, you know, successes or failures <laughs> we've had, and then we can kind of collaborate. So whether we're calling agents, KB Core leads, FISBOs, um, you know, pre-foreclosure list, what are, you know, your sphere, whatever floats your boat, you could join in on. And so I made it a part of the same area if you want to join. What else are you going to do every week? Um, a weekly newsletter, perhaps. So maybe you want to change this to monthly because you don't want to do it weekly. Those of you that ever got my setup in the past and got the add-on for the custom newsletter, you already have a custom newsletter inside your KV Core account. If you're in my all-new program, um, you're getting or have gotten now the, a beautiful custom newsletter. Or if you're not in those programs and you just want to know how to create and send a custom newsletter in KB Core, here's a free class that you can opt into and get your free class on how to create and send a custom newsletter in KB Core. Um, those of you that already have the newsletter with me, you have a training. Now here's, you already have your template. Now it's here how to start using the template. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so that's something you can do weekly or monthly. What else are you going to do? Um, weekly, a sphere call session. So imagine if you actually sat down for two full hours, at least once a week and called people from your sphere and checked in on them. Sphere, you know, whether they're family members or past clients, whether they're somebody you used to work with or somebody you met one time, you know, networking, you know, imagine what might happen to your business if you did that once a week, <laughs> you know, um, checking in, how are you doing? You know, what's been happening since last time I talked to you? What, what do you think of the real estate market? Have you noticed it uh, at the right price? Would you consider selling or, you know, what, what, what are you thinking? Are you going to, you know, anybody who has any real estate needs this year, whatever it is, imagine if you did that. Okay. <laughs> And uh, these are minimums. I mean, you could do a lot more than this two hour time slots each, but that's all I'm asking for you here. All right. What else do you want to do every week? Well, you'll notice, first of all, I've got these two different prospecting power hour time slots in here for you. Again, these are events that I do. Other events I've added on here are other things I do, like the KB Core um, monthly masterminds on here. So you'll see when I do events in there, um, whether they're free or paid. Um, you'll see when I have events that you can join in on, like KB Core Happy Hour. Here's who's got access to KB Core Happy Hour and how to get access. <laughs> All right. So anyway, so that's that. All right. What else are you going to do? So um, you'll notice here, there's one, two, three, four, five times I suggest you're going to post 
on Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, those types of places. So what's the first type of post you're going to do? A market report post. So this says create a market report, report post to share in Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, see attached example. And then I give you some more training. Rotate maybe the top 10 cities or zip codes you serve each week. Create a featured market report image, maybe in Pick, Pick Monkey or Canva to go with this post. And then create and schedule the post um, to include a market report squeeze page link from your KB Core account and your instant home value link. So what does that look like? You can click on this picture here and it shows you an example. And then I go on, there's a business of the week post. There's a squeeze page post. This is where you're gonna post a single property squeeze page to promote an event. I have, if you don't have access to all my on-demand training about, and you don't have access to my coaching, here's a free training. Um, but you click on single property squeeze page and there's an example of how it looks. And um, again, you can get access to my free training. Uh, and then community list post. What is this? Maybe top five lists of coffee shops, ho hiking trails, bakeries, or maybe it's a national holiday post like National Pina Colada Day, <laughs> whatever you want, one, something like that. You're going to create and schedule a post. What does that look like? Here's an example. Okay. And then finally, a day in the life post. Um, something personal, something about you, your business, your goals, your passions, your family, whatever. And what does that look like? There's two different examples here. Me at EXPCon meeting Grant Cardone and what was so cool about that for me. And then me, um, you know, showing houses. So, you know, people love this stuff. It's weird, but they do. Those are posts. Now, if this is something you don't want to sit down and do for a little time slot every day, guess what? That's okay. Because you could choose to schedule these posts each week. So choose a time, maybe on a Sunday or a different time of the week and then schedule it all out for the next seven days schedule it out so you can just set it and forget it. What else do I have in here? And um, what else I have in here is on Wednesdays, there's a different task to do e each week for four weeks that rotate. Um, this first one is conduct a pipeline audit. What do I mean by this? This is updating your pipeline and new leads, prospects, clients under contract close and sphere. So then I give you directions on each contacts timeline, pipeline journey, ensure all your current clients are marked appropriately, like their clients or they're under contract or they're closed. Um, and I realized I needed to do this because I'm terrible at updating this myself. So I'm like, I need to time block this. So what do I mean by that? I can think of one right now. Um, I saw it the other day and I, the problem is I have him in here with a couple different names because when he first registered on my website, he had one name, but then, but then his real name was different, his last name. So I'm going to type in Ted here. And I saw this the other day. I'm like, I never fixed that. I never fixed him at all. So Ted Walters. Okay. So Ted Walters, this is, this is correct. So it's, um, Ted Walters is who it is. And he's closed, but this is the du this is a duplicate. Um, it's a duplicate. It's I shouldn't have it. So from here, like let's say I didn't have a duplicate, I should say, okay, well he's closed. I can mark him closed now because we just closed this transaction. Let's say, um, but what I just discovered is I act I didn't realize this. I actually had a duplicate, so I did do it right the first time. So I'm gonna just delete this contact. I don't even need to merge it. Um, I'm just gonna delete it. You could merge it, but I'm just gonna delete it. Um, now, sometimes you'll say, it'll say you can't delete this because you don't own it. And that's, it's possible that you get a lead that either was transferred to you or you got like in a round robin situation with your brokerage. Um, so you don't actually own it, but you can archive it if you want to, you know, delete it. So anyway, so that is that a, a pipeline audit. So anybody, you know, if you, they're a buyer now and you're, you have a buyer agency and they're pre-approved, they're now a client. Um, if you got a listing agreement, they're now a client. If you're under contract, they're now under contract. So just kind of keeping it through the pipeline. So when you go in your business analytics and you look at who's a client, who's under contract, how many is closed, you know, <laughs> you, you'll have this updated. And, and this is a, this is a, this is one that's tough for me. So that's why I decided I need to time block it. And I put it on the calendar for us all. Okay. So that's something every Wednesday or any, again, you can do this any time of the week. Another one is doing a weekly blog post. Maybe you only want to do it monthly, but it's here for you to do. 
and you don't know how to do that, write and publish at least one, one blog post. Here's a training, a blogging content and tip, blogging and content tips for KB Core. Um, what else here? Create a landing page. So create a post and boost a landing page to promote an event or ask people to subscribe to your newsletter or offer a free download, get a list of properties. And here's some training if you don't know how to do that. And then next, create a call capture code. Um, create a call capture code to use for Instagram, Craigslist, or a mailing. You're not sure what I'm talking about? Need more training? Here's two great resources, okay? Um, and then finally, that's okay. That's it. That's it for Wednesdays. What else is on here? Um, whoo, oh, weekly I have the Facebook live video. And again, just as often as you can, I guess, but once a week or less would be all right. But you might be trying to create content that you can post on social media, that you can share in blog posts, that you can share in weekly email newsletters, um, whatever to, to get to, to, um, you know, generate more leads to put yourself out there to, to, to tell a story. And so one easy way to do that, so easy, if you just remember to do it and take the five minutes it'll take to do it. And that is pull out your phone when you're at a showing, when you're, when you have a new listing, when you're at an inspection, when you're at a new business, at a new winery or your favorite restaurant or your favorite shop, um, when you um, are meeting with a lender, when you are at an event. Um, I did one where this um, shaved ice truck came through my neighborhood, like on one of the first nice days we had in the spring. And I was so excited because it was playing like Margaritaville. And I was like, oh my gosh, is that a margarita truck? <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't a margarita truck. Um, it was shaved ice, but they had pina colada flavor and that was good enough for me. So, so anyway, do a Facebook live video whenever you see, you know, fun stuff like that and then upload it to your YouTube channel. And then you can use that video as content for your blog posts, for, you know, YouTube is great because you, when you put things in YouTube and put links in the descriptions, people, people will respond. Um, and um, I've generated lots of leads from YouTube, actually, from video descriptions. Uh, anyway, um, if you share it in and landing pages, you can do video, video landing pages. You can do, you know, the blog posts, the custom pages, emails using this video content. So anyway, if you want to get more comfortable with video or see what the possibilities are or see more examples, I have these two trainings in here. Both are really helpful. This one, the top five free marketing strategies is a nice big overview of everything. And the five tips for using video with KB Core and Beyond, really specific. I'm just doing video for any of your needs. Um, again, if you want to come to KB Core Happy Hour, this is how you do it. Um, if you want to learn about my personal coaching program because you don't know about it, you can come and ask me. Um, and then I have a couple monthly tasks. And let's go over that. And then we'll be done. One monthly task is having a KB Core training day. So this is you're going to devote one day that you're going to be focusing on you know, training for KB Core things you want to learn that haven't had time to learn. Um, you haven't set aside the time yet. Um, you know, any lead follow-up you need to do, any new lead generation activities you need to do that you haven't done yet, this, you can devote a big time chunk to it. So I've got some options here, your free DIY guide, packed full of training, my YouTube channel, my top five favorite KB Core trainings, my genie in a bottle snippets, master classes, so that you can get get more from the training here <laughs> and, and and do those things okay so i have that blocked out once a month and then i have another oh you should know too the first tuesday of every month i do a prospecting happy hour and that's an actual event um and then there's and then the other monthly thing i have is a digital marketing audit so, you know, if you, for example, your realtor.com profile, your, your, your association profiles, your Facebook page, your Google My Business page, um, making sure you have some of these things set up, number one, but also maybe you need to make a change. Like maybe you need, like I just moved out of my branch office on April 30th and now I've realized, oh my gosh, I got to go through all my profiles and make sure I've got an updated business address 
or mailing address, even if it's my business PO box, fine. I got to put something everywhere. So I need to go through that. So once a month, doing an audit to make sure everything's updated, but you won't have to do this all the time. So this, this is a training. It's only 34 minutes long. And I just go through how you would go find all these profiles and how you would claim some of the profiles you've never claimed before or built some of the profiles you've never built before and, um, and what to update there to really own your digital space. And so, you know, KB Core is so much, is not just about using the CRM. You know, some people tell me when they do get my setup, like, wow, they're getting like so many leads now organically. And part of the reason is they have a strong digital marketing presence already online where they took their KB Core website and that KB Core website link is on all their profiles that they have online, their LinkedIn, their their association profiles, Zillow, Realtor.com, Google My Business, it's everywhere. And so because they have a strong online presence and now their KB Core is optimized with us, they're starting to generate leads organically. So if you're someone saying, well, I'm not getting leads after I do a setup, um, it's probably because your, your digital marketing is lacking. And so anyway, this could be a project, but once a month you work on it little by little till it's built up. And maybe by the time it's all built up and you're good, maybe every six months, you just have to do a quick audit or, you know, there's a change. You changed a phone number. You have new headshots. You got a new address, whatever it is, you can update it. So that's it. That is the calendar.